Hi friends! Today we are covering the Suku Spring Color Collection for 2022. Highly anticipated as when I learned that Suku was dropping their new melting blush formula, I was very much looking forward to this release. In addition to the new eight shades we have in the melting blush formula, we also have four shades of the sheer matte lipsticks, three nail polishes which unfortunately for some reason can't deliver nail polish overseas, I don't know why. And three signature color eyeshadow palettes. I'll cover which shades are limited edition and permanent, but welcome. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about some Suku. Hi. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I talk all things beauty and movement. You'll see a lot of movement stuff on my IG and some of my beauty stuff here on the uh, YouTube. The products I will present were sent to me, so a huge thank you to the Suku Europe team for being so generous. This dropped on my birthday, so on January 20th, and I had mentioned to a fam member that I was tired of the releases and I'm just very much fatigued by the constant new makeup that's coming our way. But there are some things that I just have to buy. And upon learning that this would drop on my birthday in enough time to save that money, this was a release I dedicated my finances and attention to. So in addition to the PR products that I have here and that I will show in this video, I also ordered the rest of the six melting blush shades excessive yes i know the two signature eyeshadow palettes and one shade of the sheer matte lipstick so the big boom bang of the purchase was definitely the melting blushes but oh my gosh the ones that i have here and have been using for the last few days definitely validated my purchase choice for sure. so let's begin covering the melting powder blush it retails for 39 pounds but in the u.s 52 dollars and 43 cents will be the currency conversion so these are these are expensive and if it's your first time encountering Suku, it is a Japanese brand and they are, they have this prestige about them in terms of their makeup approach, their makeup formula, and everything behind the brand is beyond elegant and so intelligent, again, in terms of the philosophy of how they approach, of how they understand makeup. And yes, the packaging does seem modest upon first glance, but we will justify the price momentarily when we get into the swatches and the demo, okay? We have eight shades in total and each compact weighs in at 7.5 grams. Made in Japan and you have a suggested shelf life of 12 months. Correction on the grams, it says five grams here on the compact where I got 7.5 grams. I got that from the Selfridges site. Maybe an error? I don't know. We have a new compact design for the melting blush formula. It is a magnetized closure and you have this beautiful gold seam here with the classic black on the Suku compact and you have Suku here engraved on the side as opposed to the pure color blush single where it's a mechanical closing and opening which I thought an elegantly designed compact from the get but I am very happy that they moved to a magnetic design for the new melting blush compacts nice addition indeed to cover the details for the melting powder blush formula hmm. it's meant to be not chalky and has like a wet feel so if you press your finger into the compact the actual powder compact it has a very much like a cushiony type of texture and is a high oil content that will deliver a smooth blend it will fuse with the skin is the new M word sensation. You know what that word is. I know a lot of people get triggered by that word, so I'm not gonna say it. It allows for fuss-free blending, lightweight feel, melt seamlessly. And again, because of the oil coating in the formula, it will leave behind a less powdery look on the skin. That's not to say that their original pure color brush is something to scoff at. I think one of the most beautifully formulated powder formulas in the entire industry. Despite it being a powder, it is beyond smooth and you can see that there's a little bit of a sheen also. So when blending it on the skin is undetectable 
when you do so and what's left behind after blending is as if your skin produced the color on its own on the cheeks and to learn that it was actually a powder blush my goodness this the again the suku powder blush formula is otherworldly to say the least and now with the new melting blush formula you can definitely detect that there is a slight difference in formula just by seeing the pan and there is again a bouncy cushiony feel it's not overly wet and not overly creamy but just from that swatch alone there's more color richness here especially with the shade i have this is number eight tomoshibi and i also have zero one mizuawa which is more like a purple highlight type of a moment and i have demos to show as well this is a, an interesting shade although it looks lilac here on the swatch when applied on the skin it definitely delivers that glow from within in a very subtle way so it's more of like a soft focus finish on the cheeks and cheekbones versus their more traditionally formulated shimmery highlights that we could go compare later in the video and here on the demo when i applied tomoshibi with the suku cheek brush and the cheek brush is blue squirrel i was like "Ooh, is this going to be or too soft to whip this blush around on my skin talk about effortless i used this blush over the weekend the way it swims on the skin and just again has this creamy sensation without feeling heavy and completely and utterly foolproof with the application and the blend. I'm sure I can pick up any brush. I could probably even use a sponge with this formula and the way it fuses with the skin and leaves behind a blurred soft focus effect is unlike anything I well, well, listen, I had high expectations learning about the melting powder blush formula, but using it in person over and over again and being blown away each and every time, I cannot wait to try the other shades. And I would consider this to be the detailed video and I'll film a new video just doing a blush try on so we could get a look at the shades and have all that fun, but wanted to cover the product details here. And with Mizuawa, I thought it a surprise, right? To layer this shade on top of a warm brown and have it still work. It just melted with the color. It didn't look muddy. And it's nice to have that soft focus look on the skin and it doesn't look super lilac. I could imagine, however, if you used a denser brush and layered the color, yes, you will then get that soft lavender look on the cheeks. But using the blue squirrel blush allowed me to create a softer effect on the cheeks. And I'm doing it here now, actually with the goat brush. And this blush is described to a T, as I have read from the details that are on Suku Europe's IG page posts. This, I mean, is so soft and lightweight on the skin. And I have to say, especially with Tomoshibi, it reminds me of Paradise Venus. This blends easier than Paradise Venus. It's just beyond, I, I can't comprehend this formula. It is by far one of Suku's best. And I'm so happy they ventured out and created a new blush formula for their brand. The fact that I can apply this with Mizuawa and it doesn't look strange, it just gives the cheeks more dimension, more glow without looking overly made up, without looking artificial. And that speaks to just the, the technology in this blush formula, I, I can't comprehend. Okay, as reference, I did apply Suku's cream foundation and lightly set with their sheer loose powder. And to see these products melt and glide and combine seamlessly without any chalkiness, without the skin looking heavy all day. Okay, I could do this all day day if you wanted to quickly check out a comparison swatch here i have paradise venus okay i'll take it right next to tomoshibi so you could well 
kind of next to. And you can see that Paradise Venus has a little more actually is more muted and I detect a little bit of like a coral pink there with the brown. Tomoshibi I feel is more of like a, a true terracotta brown that provides immaculate warmth and nice to have this shade where I can double as yes a little bit of a, a bronzing moment but also for blush and to have a monochromatic look if I just wanted to stick with the blush and the sheer matte lipstick, which is number 12, I'll get to that in a minute. If I wanted to keep the eyes bare or maybe throw on Tomoshibi through the crease, this, I just can't get enough of the shade. I think a terracotta brown when it's done well. And I still love Paradise Venus, absolutely, but you can detect the slight differences in undertone. They remind me of each other, but the melting powder blush formula, if you had problems blending blush ever, you won't with this. And if you're questioning the price, you're like, $52 is a lot for a blush, Alicia. I totally get it. This is more so if you already knew you wanted to get this, if you already knew the price and you just needed to see the shade in action, I'm not telling you that you need to break the bank to buy Suku blushes, okay? I think you are responsible for your own finances and you can say no when it's like, listen, I gotta eat. So that is the melting powder blush. Again, we have eight shades in total, showed you two out of the eight. My order is scheduled to arrive on Thursday, end of day. So I might actually be able to film with the other shades on Friday, maybe can upload it the same day, we'll see because that's hard to do for me sometimes. Let me know if you already received your melting powder blushes, if you ordered them, how they compare for you with the pure color blush, the powder formula. I love them both, but I can definitely recognize that, especially if you are a drier skin type, and maybe even the Suku blush for you was just too powdery. The melting powder blush could, could be something it could be something worth considering. Next up, the signature color eyeshadow palette. The eyeshadow palettes retail for 48 pounds or $64.53. I know that is very expensive. Again, Lux makeup. 12 month suggested shelf life, also made in Japan, 6.2 grams of product. This newer formula and compact design released, was it last year? Where it was like seven quads or six to seven quads in total. I, I have all of them, another huge purchase. <laughs> this compact also has a magnetic closure and again, just beautifully elegant in its design with the gold lining and again the black finish with suku engraved this is 07 benisaki the spicy pink and gray <sighs> this one is not limited edition the one that is is 112 hoshi mama glitter and neutral brown 08 kazenare is the orange and peacock green that is permanent benisaki is permanent so i'm not entirely sure if 112 is uh, is still available or not i know from the melting powder blushes that mizuawa is sold out but i think cult beauty and liberty london will have these shades in february here are the swatches for benisaki the overlay pink is more like a veil of color pink this gorgeous it's not a metallic it's more of a I, I don't know how to categorize that shade. More of the, the maroon is like a pink maroon and the gray, absolutely to die for. I went in without any primer. I just wanted to see how these shadows looked on their own. And of course I use the Suku Eye Shadow Brush, the longer bristled fluffy one. And my goodness, just the ease. The ease of it all. It's beautiful to know you could just use one shade across your lid crease, lower lash line if you want it, it to look more smoky, place a light dosing of the gold on the inner corner. And again, you have to encounter Suku with a different perspective. This is not gonna be like your indie shadows. These aren't gonna be like Pat McGrath or even Natasha Denona shadows. It's more of makeup enhancement. It's less about pigment this and pigment that. Just the silkiness of these powders, the sophistication of the looks, 
tasks when done. I feels very much what Suku is about and well represented in their makeup products. And when it comes to the eyeshadows, I feel the approach is just more simple, minimalist in nature, which I sometimes like to deal with. Listen, I I love my 15 pan Natasha Denona palettes, okay? I sometimes want to get into it, think about what shade should I combine today. There are other times where I just want to open a small quad, a small suku quad, apply one shade, maybe tap on another to create a little more dimension like I did here. I tapped on the pink shade on the pinky maroon. I absolutely love how that looks. Throw on the mascara. And yes, I know if t the two eyes were the same, maybe it'll look a little more... I don't know, grocery shopping friendly. It's just nonsense. I would go out like this. The gray though, the gray, just beautiful. There's a sheen to it that leaves the lids not looking flat. It's almost like, it's almost like a gray taupe. And yes, when you blend that out, you're like, where, where's the pigment, Alicia? I found when fluffing it through my crease, I just took my finger, slapped on a little bit more on the lid, or you take a shader brush, slap on more on the lid, to increase the intensity there, but it's so smooth and soft. And again, it's not completely matte. There's a sheen to it. It's skin-like in finish. And I mentioned how the blush formula, both the powder and the new melting blush one, is foolproof. The same with the shadows, foolproof. You use any brush and they just glide along the skin. Great if you have dry lids, great if you have a lot of texture on the lids. These will not accentuate it. They would just melt with your skin. And the colors, I think also, especially for the spring collection, to have the grays, but the pinks and the peacocks and the oranges, those are just so beautiful. They're vibrant, but Suku managed to deliver them in a very sophisticated fashion that I think approachable, but still, again, maintains that vibrancy. I mean, this eye, come on, come on. I cannot wait to try the two other quads. They look absolutely gorgeous. And you don't have to combine, if you're thinking, you know, approaching this in a Natasha Denona fashion, like, oh, which color should I, don't worry about it. Don't worry about comparing, just put one at a time. Okay, use the gold for the highlight and accent moment. Use the pink again to layer on top. I actually layered the pink over the gray and I thought that was a nice touch. Simple. Maybe you just use the gray to lightly smoke the lash line. You don't even apply it on the lid and the crease. You just, again, simple. Next up, we have the sheer matte lipstick, 33 pounds or $44.38. Cap is sold separately, so you will have to get this separately and what comes on the actual bullet is like a plastic cap. So if you wanted, you could just keep the plastic caps on the lipsticks that you buy and only buy one of these caps. And the one that you choose to go out with that day, you'll just grab the cap and there you go. Now, if you look at the packaging and you're like, Alicia, I cannot justify that price for the packaging. I understand it's plastic, it's muted, it's muted black with the brushed gold cap. What I will say is this. I have the shade 12, Nagaretsuki. It's a bright almond brown. The sheer matte lipstick formula, where I think when moving into the category of matte finishes for lipstick, people pause. They think maybe, ooh, matte Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick, remember that? This is far beyond dry, flaky feeling matte formula. It is one of the best matte formulas. And yes, it is sheer. I would consider this to be Lisa Eldridge light. It's not gonna have that in your face like color swatch on the lip. It's just a softer delivering of color. Matte, not transfer proof. So you will get a little bit of transfer on your whatever you do this on. If you wanted to get into matte lipsticks but you just couldn't because you couldn't stand the the drying feeling, you couldn't stand the feel, you might want to give this one a shot. I was floored when this formula was first introduced, I believe last year. The minute I put it on, I was like, oh, this is nice. Silky to the touch upon application. Very smooth on the skin despite its matte finish. And yes, I do from time to time enjoy a shiny lip. If it's maybe 
moderately shiny, for instance, with the satin finish, or all the way shiny with the high level gloss formula, I think matte finishes are great for monochromatic looks. And in this case, number 12, the Nagaretsuki with Tomoshibi, is listen i could wear this every day and i thought actually nagaretsuki looked too orange on the photos i'm like oh i don't know how it's gonna look at me it's like my lip but more almond orange it says that there's a little hint of red in the formula i think they they, they nailed it man i it's rare that i could slap on a lipstick by itself without any liners Pillow Talk, I feel more comfortable using it with the Pillow Talk lip cheek. The Natasha Denona, I need a new lipstick in Michelle. Sammy and Noah, I can wear on their own, sure. But this color is, it gives my complexion freshness, <laughs> aliveness. It doesn't look too pink, but it doesn't look too orange either. And to have it with Tomoshibi is an excellent pairing. And if you were wondering, listen, I just need one of each thing, okay? Tomoshibi and Nagaretsuki. Tomoshibi being number eight. Nagaretsuki number 12. <sighs> one of my most beautiful pairings. I also ordered Levin Shudai. It is the nude pink. And the two shades that are limited, 106 Hanaraski Bright Berry and 107 Obai Translucent Orange. I didn't grab those because I know they're limited. I just felt I wouldn't use those shades as much as I would use number 12 and number 11. 11 is again scheduled to arrive Thursday so hopefully I can try it on on Friday. Using all these products from the spring color collection, what can I say? I'm very pleased with this spring color collection. When it was leaked that they were releasing eight blush shades, I already knew. I was like, I'm getting them all. I'm getting them all. They look exquisite. I can't wait to try the rest of the six shades. And while I understand this is an expensive line, this is definitely luxe territory when it comes to makeup. Japanese makeup technology, I've, I've spoken about this before, is on another level. Everything from the packaging to the formula, the caliber of it, the detail put into the color science, the application, the formula, and it doesn't have any fragrance. The blush doesn't have any fragrance, the eyeshadow no fragrance, the lipstick no fragrance, and I hold that to a higher esteem than the Dior and the Chanel's of the world. Yes, that makeup is beautiful, but with fragrance, I think it definitely limits who can wear it. But to have such an excellent formula be fragrance-free, for those who could just, listen, I love my candles, but I just can't wear it on my face, okay? To now have the opportunity and accessibility to just pristine formulated makeup and it not make you sneeze is outstanding. Before we wrap up, why don't I go into some comparisons? Now, maybe some of you were wondering about the Blush Compact. This is 101. And if you thought, well, I remembered this formula being not a powder, but not the melting blush either. Yes, this is more of like a satin finish, and you can detect that by just like there's a little bit of sheen in there. I'm picking up this orange-like color and comparing it to Tomoshibi, I believe Tomoshibi has a little more orange and that is actually very similar to Paradise Venus. So that I think a little more brown leaning, not completely the same as the melting blush formula. This is still a powder, but more of a satin finish powder. It definitely has more sheen than the pure color blush single compacts. This, however, is more of traditionally formulated powders. We're looking at blush compact 102, and I'll pick up this one here. Again, very similar in color but lighter, right? I feel like the melting blush just has 
more color impact than a lot of these. But that's not to say it's a bad thing. I think if you want a little more control with color richness in regards to blush, you definitely have it in the Suku blushes. You could build it up as you like. And you have the three blushes here and the highlights there, especially for 102, they pack a little bit more punch than their compact counterpart. So you definitely have to proceed with caution if you wanted to control the highlight there. And with Compact 103, I immediately thought of these two shades, although I think they're still, they're very different from Tomoshibi. So that one was more of like a muted terracotta, and the other one is more of like a, a bronze, right? So a lighter brown. Again, I think Tomoshibi just stands alone in its color and its formula compared to the other swatches we have on the arm. With the highlighter, this is definitely lighter in consistency than the one that exists in 102. 102 felt tighter in the pan, whereas this one is more of a veil-like dosing of highlighter. I would argue the same for the highlights that exist in 101. These are tighter as well. I think the formula in 103 was the most user-friendly because it just had a, a lighter delivery in terms of how it laid on the skin. It didn't look as bodacious, if you will, when blended. If you have the blush compacts and you are wondering, and of course I will do these comparisons again when I get the other six shades in my hands and we can kind of, you know, go over, if I have the blush compact, do I really need the melting blushes? Hmm, that's up for debate. Who knows if Suku will release one of these compact designs with the melting blush formula. I think that will be wonderful. Probably release new shades. I'm not entirely sure. That's just an assumption. Don't kill me. And as much as I'm looking forward towards trying the other shades that are on their way, I absolutely love 08 Tomoshibi, especially with sheer matte lipstick number 12, Nagaratsuki. <sighs> I wouldn't consider this a review. <laughs> I think I would consider this more suku simping. Listen, I went into this already loving the products. I just wanted to show you the swatches. If you were wondering about this drop, how the colors looked, how they performed, to quickly go back to the blush in terms of longevity, because it is a higher oil content, naturally, it's going to wear off sooner than a traditionally formulated powder blush would. So if you are an oily skin type, I would set your face first, apply the melting blush, and then lightly dust again just to lock in the powder so it doesn't disappear faster. Although I would say because of the higher oil content, it will lessen in intensity in a, in a more natural fashion perhaps when the oils from the formula mixes with the oils naturally occurring on your face, it's just going to look less intense by the end of the day. And I would say if you want it more longevity, then sure, stick to the powder formula, but I do think you can adjust the staying power with a little bit of strategy. You know your skin type, maybe you try the melting blush by itself, on your more oily skin type and it faded quickly, then I would then, again, apply on set skin or lightly set the melting powder blush and see if you get a little more wear from that. If you experimented with those different techniques, please let us know down below. Also mention your skin type, right? I think we can help each other figure out if this is something that we can use, that we can enjoy or not, but I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy the new Suku Melting Blush Formula. It is a complete and utter hit. I did not expect anything less from the brand and I cannot wait to see what else they have in store if they would perhaps experiment with uh, a melting eyeshadow formula. Who knows? Probably not because they infuse a lot of their skincare technology into their makeup. It doesn't make sense to have a high oil content in an eyeshadow with lids naturally get more oily than the rest of your face. So they'll probably won't do that. Maybe they'll have a melting highlighter formula. That would be just utterly beautiful. All right, that's enough, Alicia. Let them go. Thank you all so much for watching. 
I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, suku extravaganza, or a monthly faves. Take care, and I will see you again soon.